Yes, so my name is uh, Thomas Toftegård, as Jens said. I am uh, head of the Department of uh, Engineering here in uh, Aarhus. I am also extremely uh, delighted to see uh, both all our graduates for the summer uh, round and also all of you uh, family members. I assume that a number of you have never been in this building before. So, so this building you are in is called Navitas. You probably heard that. This is where we have our mechanical and civil engineers. Uh, it's a fairly new building, even though we already lost the roof outside. Uh, we have only had the building for one year. Uh, and we actually have very ambitious plans for this setup. We are doing it together with, uh, in Kuba Science Park, with industry, uh, and also with uh, what's in Danish called Maskinmester School. They are also in this building. So we are trying to build a significant science area in mechanical slash civil engineering here. Um, yes. Um, so, so once again, as Jens said, congratulations, of course, to all our graduates. I think you can be extremely proud. I think you already are, or you also are. Also, family members, I think you should actually also be very proud. I think you have, uh, yeah, I know you, I know you are. Uh, you, you have some uh, kids that has done an, an exceptional job. So, my point is, today is a very good day. Uh, we have in the engineering team here, here uh, a lot of things we can be proud of. Um, I will show you a couple of things. So first of all, this is a uh, uptake in engineering students on the master level during the last four years. So you can see we are grouped in a number of uh, disciplines from mechanical and electrical and civil uh, and biological and chemical engineering. And you can see in 2010 we have, uh, we have enrolled around 160 students in total. And in 14, we are uh, enrolling close to 300, so we are almost doubling this. And in 2015, this is increasing again. You can also see that uh, in all of the fields, we are actually growing. So it's a very positive trend. But we are not here to, ce to uh, celebrate, uh, of course, only what the university is doing. I have a few slides I want to show, or a few figures more I want to show you. So we are being measured by our ability to build an, uh, the best possible organization to do education on a high level. And one measure we use is the publications that our staff members do. So you can see this is the figure showing what we are as an organization doing in this. So, so the curve is going up, that's the essence. We are also being uh, measured by our ability to do research together with industry and attract uh, research funding as an organization. And uh, this means that some of your kids, your gra the graduates here, they have actually had the opportunity to participate in research projects together with industry and working with that prior to graduating. We are also focused on economy probably boring, but this is the curve showing the turnover of the department. So you can see in 2011, we had a total turnover of around 75 million kroner, Danish kroner. And in 2015, this year, we will have a turnover around 140 million. So we are almost doubling this. So we are increasing quite a lot, and we will also do that in the future. Um, yeah. But we are not here, as I said, only to celebrate all the good things for the engineering setup here. We are, of course, here to celebrate our graduates. And no matter how well we are doing in terms of research and so on, the by far most important contribution we have to the society is our young students. Um, so we work very hard, as hard as we can, to make sure that we are able to deliver graduates that can become the leaders of the Danish uh, society in different technical fields 
where there will be a tremendous impact in the future. Um, and I'm therefore extremely happy to see that we have, if I understand correctly, actually 61 graduates here today. Uh, we are graduating in total for the entire year uh, around 150. We also do that in the winter time. Um, and I think you have to be aware, graduates, that your conditions are extremely good. And I'll show you a couple of figures. So your conditions for going out away from the academia into the industry, they are extremely good. This is a very new figure from May this year that shows the need for engineers during, for the next 10 years. So you see here 2015, okay, I can, yeah, 2015 and uh, up to 2025. And the light blue columns, they are the need for engineers. The dark blue is the additional need for natural science people. So you can see in the next 10 years, the best predictions we have from the industry is that we are lacking, even though we keep adding more and more engineers already. We are lacking around 10,000 of you guys in 10 years. So you have very, very good conditions compared to a lot of other people, young people. Not only to get a job, but actually to decide yourself what you want to do. I will show you another one. So this is from the Danish newspaper Ingenieur. It's also from May this year. So it shows the unemployment rate for you, for, for us as engineers. And what you can see is the average unemployment rate is 2.3%. This is a started curve here. And what you can also see is that all the disciplines that we are educating engineers in, they are the ones we have on the first four columns here. So we do chemical engineers, biotech people, civil and architectural engineers, mechanical engineers and electrical and computer engineers, biotech also. But for all those, the unemployment rate is below the average. And if I in understand the politicians correct, if we have a figure, an unemployment rate below 1.6, this is a serious bottleneck for society. So we already have that, and we know it's going to get worse. So again, if you want to, you will have very nice conditions. Okay. So, without pretending to be your mother, or maybe father, <laughs> um, I will give you a couple of advices. I am an old guy, and I have some experience. I have worked for some time in the industry and also in academia. And uh, I'll give you two advices that I think you should or think about them. So the first one is, I think you should be extremely aware about how you spend the next three to five years. So from my, uh, from my uh, own experience, I think this will influence you for your professional career for a very, very long time. And again, I repeat, you have excellent possibilities for deciding a lot of things yourself at the moment. Um, yeah. So make sure you have a plan and then uh, follow the plan and update the plan and so on. You are engineers. The other advice I have to you, and now it becomes really boring, is that you should continue this so-called self-learning and lifelong learning. So I think everybody has said that for the last 50 years in this world. But I think you have to be aware that uh, when we work with technology and look at what's going on at the moment, I think it's fair to say that I don't think things will slow down during the coming decades. So when we look at what's going on in terms of uh, 
of uh, technological development in different areas, it's going to be extremely hard to keep up with this. So, um, so one thing, again I'm an old guy, one thing that I think about is that in 2006 nobody knew the iPhone. And in, I think in 2001, I met Google the first time. I think Google was founded in 98. But imagine, so we're not talking that many years, my friends. <coughs> imagine before that, there was nothing like that. And today, I think we, uh, yeah, it's hard to understand. At least, at least I have a daughter, she's 14 years old, she, she cannot understand this. Not at all. Um, yeah. I want to show you, this is a little bit of a technical curve, I'll do it quickly. So this is a curve, it's the so-called exponential plot. So on this x-axis you have the year from, uh, from uh, yeah, 1900 <coughs> up until 2100. And what you see on this, this is a logarithmic plot. So on this axis we have the number of calculations a processor can do at a given price. And this curve you see here is what is in electronics called Moore's Law. So it says that for every two years, roughly, we can, we can uh, double the speed of the processing we are able to do for the same price. And this, this law was actually described in, 60, in 1965 and it's been running since. And this is the reason why we can make the iPhone, for instance, in all the electronics. But the little bit scary thing about this is that those that are working with this, also in our organization, those that are researching in this field, they think that this curve will continue. And, and what you see in this dotted line, so this is uh, how much brain power one uh, insect has. This is how much brain processing one mouse has. This is how much one human brain has. And up here, this is how much all human brains have together in the world. So I, I, I think, again, to emphasize this to you, I think we will see an extreme change and technological impact in the next decades. Because this is going to influence all other areas too. So. Um, I want to offer you the opportunity to stay linked with the institution. We are putting up an effort to create an alumni here. So we are actually keeping up the network with you, no matter where you go and where you are going to be. Um, yeah, you can have that one, 10 seconds. The very smart guy said this. Um, but what, what I want to show you is what I would like for you graduate students to do is to go in and register as a former student from this institution on this link. So we are working on different uh, ways to, uh, to offer you a, a service in your, also in your future career here. Yeah. So you can register with your private email or, or whatever. Um, yes. <coughs> So with that, I would like once again to congratulate you for an excellent job and wish you a, a very nice trip in your future career. <laughs>